Good morning. I hope we're all sparkly. I feel like Tony Montana today. We've had a big shipment. Um, I wanted to do a picture of me sat at my desk with all this testosterone sipping it, just kind of stacked up. I go, say hello to my little friend. Um, but that got vetoed. <laughs> All of my dodgy ideas get vetoed. I'd be in so much trouble if I didn't add Lydia. <laughs> um, so, testosterone sipinate. As you guys know, it's our preferred choice of testosterone here at the Men's Health Clinic. Uh, it's the most effective ester for achieving stable levels in the vast, vast, vast majority of guys. I do have guys on Enanthate, but those guys have their testosterone prescribed by the NHS. So it's more cost effective for them. It's not quite as good. Why is it not quite as good? Well, the ester uh, has a different preservative. It's normally sesame oil, which is quite viscous. And the preservative in Enanthate is chlorobutanol, which is an irritant. So it's not particularly good for subcutaneous injections and as you guys know subcutaneous injections are a preferred choice not only are they less painful but they create less aromatization of testosterone to estrogen estrogen is incredibly important we are not trying to lower estrogen we are trying to control estrogen so intramuscular testosterone injections tends to cause a spike because of overstimulation of the aromatase enzyme. So slowing the absorption down through the subcutaneous route decreases that propensity. You have to remember that as close as damn it as we get to mimicking natural physiology, you can't, but it's as close as damn it. Now diabetics now have actually got pumps so they can respond to blood sugar and adjust the insulin dose accordingly. Will that ever happen in TRT? No, it would be absurd. Um, but it's an interesting concept. So the NHS has gone from a very sledgehammer approach to treating people with diabetes to this more high-tech approach uh, where your body does adjust its insulin regime according to your blood sugar. You do need a very tight control of blood sugar with diabetes because of the uh, potential consequences of low and high. So it's incredibly important. People often compare diabetes with testosterone. Well, they wouldn't take they wouldn't take a diabetic off uh, insulin. It's not quite the same when it comes to the type one diabetics because obviously they have an autoimmune dysfunction. Uh, whereas when it comes to type 2, yeah, I think you can make that comparison. So the NHS is very willing to dish out drugs, as I put them smarties, uh, to help sort out your type 2 diabetes, when primarily the big factor that has caused your type 2 diabetes is a poor lifestyle. The chunky monkeys eating too much carbohydrates. So you should be told to go away and lose all of the excess weight. Uh, so you do not need the drugs. But the NHS will quite happily give you metformin, glyclozide and these new drugs. Now, I'm kind of out of the loop with all of that. So I'm not really that bothered. Um, but they should be instilling the same ethos or philosophy with testosterone replacement therapy. But... It's slightly complicated by the fact that if you give exogenous testosterone, what you're going to do is you are going to suppress the hypothalamus and pituitary. So you're not going to send the normal signaling down. So you can't really apply the same standard and say, uh, have testosterone until you lose all the weight and you reverse the, sim the symptoms and signs and the uh, reasons why you've got low testosterone and then come off TRT. Doesn't quite work like that. Now in theory you should recover, but 
medicine versus science doesn't always work out like that. So some guys do have a medically supervised restart protocol. Some guys who want to come off TRT, they simply come off and they react accordingly. It can be quite soon, it can be delayed, it cannot happen. Now I think you do need to remember that we only have a finite amount of time on this planet and if you appreciate the importance of the present moment, why would you accept that? So I'm going to go all Zen now. No, I'm not. Um, I think it's a funny. I think there are double standards within the NHS which are quite disappointing. Uh, and private practice allows us to deliver what we consider gold standard care and adopt a very more progressive and holistic approach to TRT. Now, testosterone affects numerous organs. It's not all about and uh, having a hard on. It's about mental health, quite frankly. Now, people with low testosterone suffer to varying degrees an element of low mood anxiety and depersonalization now i've had more than one person sit in front of me and say without trt they would not be here i've also had guys go i just don't feel like myself numbers confirmed and we've had a discussion so okay you know trt is in your best interests but please remember it is involved it isn't a wham bam thank you ma'am uh, it is a complicated process. On the premise of it, it seems very simple. Testosterone, cypionate and HCG. But we need to know how your body reacts. We need to adjust when your physiology adjusts. So when you present with low testosterone, your physiology has made the necessary adjustments to try and compensate for that low testosterone. Now, a common finding is low SHBG. Now, SHBG is a buffer. It's a positive health marker. So when it's low, what you want to do is you want to look for the reversible causes and hopefully address them. So obesity, metabolic syndrome, hypothyroidism. But we do see an increasing number of guys who do not appear to have a reversible cause apart from having low testosterone which is fascinating because obviously what that's indicating is the shbg has dropped to compensate for the low testosterone isn't that fascinating so what we find with those guys who have no reversible causes with daily injections and again we are doing our very best to mimic natural physiology through daily injections, microdosing. Um, what we find with those guys is that SHBG increases the, lo the longer the time goes on. And so sometimes what happens is you get guys level and stable and they notice a slight dip. And actually, I quite like that because actually that means that the SHBG has risen so that the SHBG can do what it's designed to do, and that's actually act as a buffer. Because you need testosterone, estrogen, DHT 24-7. It isn't wham bam, thank you ma'am. I do love wham bam, thank you ma'am. Um, so when your SHBG does rise, you need to adjust your protocol. So there is a little bit of confusion about this. It's a good thing. Not a bad thing, because then what happens is you don't actually have to adjust your protocol. So people that have been low for a long time, um, they need a little bit of a transition period and they need adequate counselling to recognise that this is a process. This isn't... Um, I'm going to say wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, again. So I call this video wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Um, because uh, everything's a journey. We go zen again. Not going to go zen again. Um... What the hell am I talking about now? So, yeah, the premise behind TRT is obviously working with your body, providing the foundations. Now, once you've got the foundations in place, the really the rest is up to you. 
And I think that's a message that uh, does not get spoken about enough. So, ad nauseum, lifestyle, nutrition, exercise. Um, incredibly important. And you know, I can optimise your male androgen levels, but you won't necessarily feel great unless you address every single aspect of your health. Now again, great levels, uh, what can go wrong? Well, you can have a raised hematocrit. How can you have a raised hematocrit with microdosing? It doesn't make sense because you're mimicking physiology and you said it's perfect. Well, it's near as damn it perfect. So there are things like a raised hematocrit from microdosing. Why does it happen? Well, it tends to happen because uh, you get an element of central and peripheral obstructive sleep apnea. So it's one of the risk factors uh, that you should be counselled about pre-TRT. And sometimes guys present with rather high HCTs prior to TRT. And again, showing due diligence, what you should be doing is you should be looking at people's sleep patterns and addressing that before potentially starting TRT. So if somebody does snore badly and they get the old elbow from the missus, um, you should be addressing that. Now, does that prevent you from needing or being a candidate for TRT? No, not necessarily. But it's a judgment call. And these judgment calls cannot be made over a, the telephone. They cannot be made via a simple five-minute conversation. You need to be sat in front of your doctor who actually will act in your best interest. So again, you don't automatically get TRT if you qualify for TRT. What you should be ducking, ducking? You sh what you should be doing is looking to help yourself. Take control. That's what it's all about. Because if you are passive in everything or anything in life, then you don't really appreciate how important it is. Now, how can that be if you're talking about Zen? Because you are what you are. Um, it's super important to realise that uh, this... I'm not going to go there. Um, yeah, I, I, I think people need to realise that this paternalistic attitude or approach that we've had towards doctors, towards the NHS, isn't working. So I always say hand over a little bit of responsibility to me. Um, but I don't want to take full responsibility because if I take full responsibility, um, you're not going to be fully engaged in the process and you need to be fully engaged in the process. But if you could have done this on your own, I want you to do this on your own. I don't want you. I don't want you, I, you know, um, you, 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 um, you need, you need to take life by the balls and I don't think enough people, uh, do that and they hand over too much responsibility, too much trust, too much trust in the NHS and too much trust in the government. Now the NHS was founded on need. Um, now that need has been abused uh, and we now live in an entitled society. Um, and the more you learn, the more you appreciate that entitlement and need and deserve are all slightly different. Um, but I pay my national insurance. Okay. Uh, you have no idea how much healthcare costs. Yeah, but, you know, if, if I was a female and I wanted to be a male, uh, I'd get testosterone. Yeah, you would. Life is queer. Um, we live in a politically correct world that actually doesn't serve in the necessarily the best interests of the individual. So we have to think about the collective, but you can't upset the liberal left. Um, or what I mean is the fascist left, um, where you no longer have free speech for fear of offending somebody. Now that's disgusting. So free speech, we should be able to say what we want to say for fear of people getting offended. Offended. Um, sorry. Yeah, it just it, it kind of it kind of frustrates me because. Um, the mental health aspect of low testosterone. You know, we need to be men. So uh, we do, obviously. You, know, you, you, you want to be alpha. You want to be cool, calm and confident. So I always bang on about this. 
I always bang on about the fact that when we think about balance, when we think about harmony, um, we need to appreciate the need for contrast, uh, anabolic versus catabolic, to establish harmony, to establish balance. You need to appreciate the need for both of those. Um, so if you have a massively high testosterone, what's kind of confusing is you kind of think, well, I've had low mood with low testosterone, so does that mean I'm going to have a great mood with high testosterone? Uh, it, yeah, you can do for sure. Now, what happens with high testosterone? Your dopamine increases. So, wow, yeah, pleasure chemical. So, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Now, we need contrast in life. So, if you've got a persistently high testosterone and a persistently high dopamine, if you have a life event and you have no way of increasing that dopamine, you don't actually get any pleasure from it. So it's kind of confusing, isn't it? So I've got high testosterone, I feel amazing. I've got high dopamine, I feel amazing. But in order to appreciate it, in order for your mind to appreciate it, you need to have contrast. So a, a positive life event uh, should cause you to have a spike of dopamine. So, um, not talk about my rave days. So you can have too much of a good thing. So, ecstasy, um, any recreational drug, uh, obviously it gives you a massive high, uh, but there comes a time where you don't want to have any more. Why? Because you've got massive dopamine, you've got massive serotonin. Duh, 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 duh. We need contrast. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't really fully understand or appreciate. So the association of uh, high testosterone anabolic steroids with mental health issues is quite strong. Now, there's been a very recent suicide in the bodybuilding community. Um, I am privy to the backstory to this. Um, which I'm not going to tell you because it's not appropriate for me to tell you. But um, if something good happens, there should be a reaction. If something bad happens, there should be a reaction. But people with high testosterone or they're on anabolic steroids, they lack empathy, they lack insight. And to actually cause a reaction, to actually try and attempt to create this sort of contrast that should evoke um, a change in the nervous system, hormonal system, what people do is they actually tend towards more risky behavior, more dramatic behavior. So I think this is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, when we've got high testosterone and are 18, 19 years old, and we've got high dopamine, guys tend to turn towards risky behaviours. Now, if you go back to hunter-gatherer, we wouldn't be doing that. We'd be hunting and gathering. We have a survival need, but we don't have a survival need now. So rather than the risk of um, da -da -da, we're trying to fight off the saber-toothed tiger, uh, we are going to take that risk to get to that reward. Uh, we don't have that in our lives now. So we have uh, some seductive paths that we take because uh, they're naughty. Um, they, uh, they do hopefully provide a dopamine response, but you haven't made any effort and you've chosen the path of least resistance, which again is a survival mechanism, a survival thing. So, you know, it stands to reason that you should choose the path of least resistance. But we've got this kind of weirdness where we, we don't actually have to survive. So we are making bad choices. And unfortunately, without a survival need, we have a lot of choices and a lot of them are bad because the dopamine reward from that risky behavior we believe is worth taking but it's not. Um, when you get older, you realize that what you should be doing is having a more considered approach. 
having a more holistic approach to lifestyle, nutrition, and exercise, and appreciating you need to address all of those aspects before uh, going forwards. But we don't do that when we're young because we're invincible. So we're building up that ego. Um, we're developing that wonderful, healthy ego, and bang, it crashes down. So for some people, that's low testosterone. Some people, it's obviously a life event. But it's fascinating, isn't it? Um, when you get to a certain age, you realise that all of this kind of material bullshit that we've um, grown up in, been exposed to, conditioned to uh, seek, search and uh, need is actually garbage. And um, what we should be doing is looking inwards, like Carl Jung said, the first 40 years of your life is developing a healthy ego and the next 40 is looking inwards to remove that ego. Um, and for some people, low testosterone is that catalyst and then TRT is that foundation for you to actually start building again once you've hit rock bottom. Because it's funny, isn't it? Humans tend to need to hit rock bottom before they actually affect a change. Um, and you can see that in society right now, which I find um, quite interesting and illuminating. This whole coronavirus thing, what's happened, uh, as, soon as, it, as soon as it happened, there were some arseholes who... Uh, went on eBay with nappies at 10 times the price to try and profiteer. Um, and then you saw um, people in the streets being far more friendly than they were before because actually they realised the need uh, for humanity and the need to uh, appreciate your civil liberties because we've had our civil liberties taken away, which is shocking. Um, let's not go there, but... Um, yeah, I think we need to sometimes hit rock bottom in order to heal and move forwards. So it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, there you go. I think that was enough of a rant.